told me I need to say that I don't own the rights to this music. So whenever you play music, when you're on a video, you got to say you don't own the rights to the music so that they don't take your post down. So let me follow those instructions. I do not own the rights to this music. This is William Murphy already getting better. Hello, hello. Thank you all for joining me. I had to push the time back a little bit today. I had some things I had to take care of, but I wanted to honor my commitment. And I also appreciate you all looking for um, this time of sharing and allowing me to know that it's uh, in blessing you and you look forward to hearing uh, from me as it relates to hearing from God. And so thank you all for joining us, joining me. And uh, I'm not going to be on here long because I just saw someone some, someone type in that it's their lunch break. And I want you to be able to get back to your lunch break and get back to work. So we're just going to be on here for a few minutes. But I do want to talk about tuning in and the importance of tuning in to the voice of God. Um, you all may remember this. Um, about a few weeks ago, I want to say it was like October the 3rd, um, around 2 o'clock p.m., the government issued this, this national test that came out, right? It was an alert system. I think it's called the WEA, the Wireless Emergency Alert. You all remember that test? It was like 2 o'clock in the afternoon. It came on everybody's phone, and it was a, like a, a, a tone that came on your phone to... Um, alert us and it was issued by the government. Jessica says she remembers. Naomi, hey Naomi, she says she remembers. Yeah, so it was amazing because I'm always listening and looking for things that God can give me to um, connect it to something else. I believe it's, it's object lessons and things that we can learn from the natural things that are going on around us in the world. We just got to pay attention and to be perceptive. But anyway, um, the Holy Spirit brought that to my remembrance. He said, remember how that alert came out and uh, it was on, it was coming on everybody's phone. And he said, even the government has an understanding that our ability to, to hear needs to be checked periodically. <laughs> Even the government recognizes that we need to have our ability to hear checked periodically. And I said, wow. I said, you know, how many times do we go on every single day, every single week, busy with the, the details and the distractions of life and not even realizing that we haven't heard from God or even inquiring of the Lord to hear from God. Sometimes we're on automatic pilot and we just leave out the house, leave out the door, taking care of our daily, you know, responsibilities and duties. And we don't even, you know, we don't realize until later on in the day that we didn't even acknowledge. God about where we're about to go, what we're about to do, what we're about to purchase, who we're about to call. I wanted to share this scripture with you. This scripture really, really blessed my life. It's Isaiah chapter 50 and it's verse, I want to say verse four, but it's talking about hearing the voice of God. Isaiah 50 and four says, and this is the um, the message translation. It says, the master, God has given me a well-taught tongue so I know how to encourage tired people. You know, sometimes we think hearing the voice of God is just for us, but how many of you know sometimes when we get up in the morning, God has more than us in mind? We know that even by the outline that God gave us to pray. He said, when you pray, say, our father. That was that was to clue us in or tune us into the fact that he doesn't expect us to just be talking about us when we pray. He said, come to me knowing that I'm your father, but I'm our father. I'm Abba father. I'm not just your father. I'm not just concerned about what, what's going on with you, but I want to use you as a channel so that I can minister and bless other people. So he says right here, God has given me the well-taught tongue so I will know how to encourage tired people. I'm around tired people a lot. I'm around people that share how weary they are, how, you know, discouraged they are about things. People that, of course, that are not in the word. You know, you encounter those people. You encounter them in the department stores. You encounter them in the marketplace. But God is counting on us to have a word in due season in our mouth. He's counting on us to be tuned into him so that we can be a channel. Yes, Lillian, we can be a channel. We can be used by God to encourage weary and tired people. It says he wakes me up in the 
the morning. He wakes me up and opens my ears to listen as one who's ready to take orders. He's waking in our ears. And so that means sometimes our ears can be sleep. We can have sleepy ears. We can have ears that have become dull of hearing, ears that are asleep to what's going on around us. We're so we're so focused on what's going on to affect us, but we're not focused in on what God wants to use us to do to be a blessing to somebody else. He wants us to encourage weary and tired people, people who are without hope, people who don't know God the way we know God. He wants us to be that channel. He wants us to be that vessel. He wants us to be that connecting point from them to him. And he wants us to be able to open our mouths boldly and confidently and have a word, a refreshing word, a life changing, life sustaining word for somebody else. But if all I'm focusing on is me and woe is me and what's going on with me, I'm not going to be tuned into the voice of God for God to speak to me for someone else. And so we've got to get outside of ourselves. Another translation, I believe this is the, um, CEV translation, the contemporary English translation. It says, the Lord has given me the right words to encourage the weary. Each morning he awakens me eager to learn his teaching. I love it. Eager to learn his teaching. One translation says he awakens me to hear as a student ready to learn. And so I think about how my daughter, when she goes to school, she loves school. She, she sleeps, eats and drinks school. She loves school. And so when she gets up in the morning, she's excited. She's aligning her stuff at night before trying to make sure she has everything. She's in a posture of learning. She's ready to learn. So when she goes to school, the reason why she's able to consistently keep getting straight A's every quarter is because she goes with an attitude and a mindset to receive. She's open. She's ready to we see she goes in like a sponge and I'm saying when we wake up in the morning we should be like a sponge sitting in the presence of God ready to soak up whatever it is that God wants to give us knowing again it's not just for us but it's for the overflow it's so that somebody can encounter our lives and receive from the fruit that what, what we have in our life and what we receive in our life but I thought about this when I thought about the um, the alert system from the government some people were complaining about the alert system some people said it was an inner Corruption. Some people said it, it was a distraction. It was annoying to them. Some people ignored it. Do you know you can ignore the alert system of the Holy Ghost? Do you know he's our internal compass and he's our guide? He's, he's our alert system from the Father. The Bible says in John 16 and 13 that he, when the Holy Spirit comes, he will lead and guide us into all truth. So if he's leading us into truth, that means he's leading us away from error. That means we don't have to keep falling over and over and over again saying we fall down and, and but we get up. We don't have to keep falling down and getting back up. He says, I'm able to keep you from falling because you can follow my voice and my spirit will lead you into truth and away from error. So we've got to be so we can't be like the people with the alert system from the government. Some people even muted it out. They muted their phone. Do you know you can mute the voice of the Holy Ghost? Do you know you can put it on mute where you just ignore him? That you just say, oh, you know what? I'm not going to acknowledge him. I'm not going to, I don't need to pray about where I'm going. I've done this before. I know how to do this. This isn't my first rodeo. I'm an expert. I don't have to listen to his alert. And all of the time you're about to do something and the Holy Spirit is alerting you. He's trying to make you aware of something that could be an impending danger. The Bible says there's a way that seems right to a man, but the end of that one way are ways of destruction. And so if the enemy can get us to, to, to follow our own way and our own mind and our own intelligence and our own will, wisdom. Proverbs 3 and 5 says, trust in the Lord. Trust in God. Lean not into your own understanding, but in all of your ways and every path that you take, acknowledge God. It's so simple, but yet we forget to do it. Acknowledge God in all of your ways and he will direct your path. How's he going to direct your path? 
through the voice of he, him, Holy Spirit. So we can't do, we can't treat the Holy Spirit like we treated the, the government's alert system the other week. We can't just mute it out. We can't ignore it. We can't just be irritated by it. We can't disconnect from it. I found out that there were people in certain carriers that opted out of the message. <laughs> they said, we don't want to receive the message from the government. So they opted out. Do you know you can opt out from receiving the message from the Holy Ghost? You can opt out and say, I don't want to receive from him. I don't want that spooky. That's, that's, that's too much. That's being, you know, a fanatic. No, no, no. It's, it's about being tuned into the voice of God. He said the steps of a righteous man are ordered of the Lord. That means they've already been predetermined. That means that God is already in our tomorrow right now. That means that he's already been where we're about to go. So who better to ask? We call everybody but God. We call our girlfriend. We call our boyfriend. We call our prayer partners. We call everybody and ask them what should we do except the one that's already in our tomorrow, our alert system, our company is our God. And I just want to bring your attention back to getting back to what we used to do, getting back to the basics. I thank God so much for my church. I thank God for my apostle. I'm so elated at the elevation that he received on yesterday and transitioning into the role of the apostle. But he taught a lesson one time about hearing better here than we do here. And a lot of times we're so led by the things of what everybody else is doing and we follow the crowd and we fall along with what every about the trend and what's what's going on at the moment but we've got to be so tuned in to the specific word of God for our lives and again it's not difficult to hear God's word God's voice is his word so whenever we want to hear from God all you got to do is go open up the book all you got to do is read it don't read it like it's a novel but read it with the intention on receiving the voice of God and then when you go to church the voice of the pastor, the voice of the apostle will confirm what you heard from God in your spirit. That's when you begin to run around the church. That's when the shout begins to break out because this is confirmation of what I've been hearing all week by the spirit of the living God. It's not the first time I heard it, but it is settling and establishing what I've been hearing in my alone time, spending in the presence of God. I'm not going to wait for anybody else. I'm going to get into this word. I'm going to get into the voice. I'm not going to mute the voice. I'm not going to ignore it. I'm not going to discount it. Yeah, something told me. No, no, no. We're going to stop with the something told me. We're going to begin to acknowledge he, him, Holy Spirit for the compass, the God, the teacher that he is. And he knows everything that we don't know. And so we need to be tapped in and tuned into him. So what's our action item going to be today? We're going to make sure that we begin to have more God conversations. I didn't say good conversations. I said we're going to have God conversations. God conversations are when we don't just do all the talking, but when we talk and we acknowledge God, but we make time to hear. We got to have, we got to allow God to begin to respond to us. Monica, that's right. We've got to begin to allow God to respond to us. Well, you know what? When I when I tapped on my phone, sometimes you tap on your phone, especially those of you who have iPhones. If you accidentally hold that, that button down too long, Siri will come on. And she says, what can I help you with today? <laughs> I want to let you know the Holy Spirit is saying to you, what can I help you with today? What is it that you need my help with? See, a lot of times we don't acknowledge we need help, but we do. We need his help. We need his guidance. God would not have given us the guide, the helper, if we didn't know we were going to need his help. And so just like Siri is saying to you, the Holy Ghost is saying to you today, what do you need my help with today? Where can I navigate for you? What can I show you? I'll show you things to come. What is it that you want to know about your future? Who is it that you want to know whether you should connect with them or not? What are associations that are no longer or beneficial for you in this next season. If you acknowledge me, I'll show you. I'll tell you. I'll alert you when something's not right. I'll alert you 
As long as you don't mute me, as long as you don't discount me, as long as you don't ignore me, I'll speak and you'll hear me and you'll respond and I'll lead you right into the perfect place of peace. Well, that's all. I don't want to keep you on here long. I want you to be able to jump back in and get back into your day of what you were doing. But thank you all so much, Schaefer and Lillian and Celestine, Teresa, my girl. Thank you so much, you all. Pastor Daryl, I appreciate. Yes, the Holy Spirit is waiting to have conversations with us. Michelle, it is powerful. Mr. Scott, it is so powerful. I thank God for the revelation of that because for so long, we can just go about our day not even acknowledging the voice of God. But when we acknowledge him, he has promised he will direct our path and he's going to only lead us into success and increase and promotion because that's the kind of God that he is. And so, Father, I thank you today for everybody that's viewing, everybody that's watching. I pray for their ears on today. I pray even as an audiologist begins to minister to the hearing capacity uh, of our natural ears. Father, I minister to the healing capacity, the hearing capacity of our ears in the spirit. I thank you, Father, that we'll not miss you. We'll not get in front of you. We'll not get behind you. But Father, we'll walk in sync with you and with your voice. I thank you that we're in time. We're in the right time. We're in the right season. We're in the right place. And I Thank you, Father, that as we submit and surrender to you, you will continue to lead us and guide us into all truth. And so we thank you for our ears opening up. There are no sleepy ears. We have awakened ears from this day forward, and we're tuned in to your voice in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, guys. Love you so much. I appreciate it. Share it with others so that we can all begin to tune in and function in the perfection that God has designed for us to do. Everyone have a blessed rest of your day.